Hey, what's going on, everybody? V.me here coming to you with the top three video for tactics. First off, let me say that you should play whatever items you want, but these top three builds are the ones that I consider my absolute favorite for winning games in Dead Cells. Dead Cells just underwent a massive balance patch, so some of the old builds in the top three tactics video aren't gonna work and we're giving you brand new ones to try out now. The builds you're gonna see are considering that you are playing in 4 BC or higher. We want something that's relatively easy to use without a lot of mechanical skill that goes behind it. And we don't want any builds that require a rare star to fix in order for it to work. All of the builds have timestamps that you can see below. And when you're finished with these, feel free to check out my other top three videos, which are also linked in the description. But without further ado, let's get started with my first top three tactics build. Point Blank Boyax Shrapnel Ripper. Admittedly, I first saw this build over at the Dead Cells Discord, and I honestly didn't think it would work. But after giving it a try, I found this to be way, way stronger than it actually looks. This build has two things going for it. One, it has huge front-loaded damage because the boy axe with point blank hits like a truck. It has very fast movement because the shrapnel axe has one of the best combos in the game. And chaining from the first boy to the first slash of shrapnel is almost seamless. As I recorded the footage for this, I actually chose to not play this as dual bound, but if you have the ability to do so, go ahead and give it a try. Now, of course, boy axe can be used to kill everything by itself, but the idea that you are throwing a single axe and then ripping it out manually does take up some time. And maybe you don't have a lot of room to do that when you're surrounded by enemies. Shrapnel Axe is pretty cool, but it doesn't really have a ton of upfront damage, though it is highly versatile because you can use it at multiple ranges. Combine all of these together and you end up with a really cool build that actually destroys pretty much everything. Take a look at the difference between doing single throw and single rip compare it to doing a throw and a slash with Ripper enabled. For the most part, it's foolproof and not a lot of monsters can really defend against this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build itself. So obviously recommended items, Boy Axe and Shrapnel Axe. You can roll the Boy Axe for things like bonus damage to poison, which might show up in your skills later. And then the Shrapnel Axe can actually roll for bonus damage to rooted target, as well as all of the other damage over time it fixes. So whatever we go with between the two, we want to have some kind of synergy happening. Recommended skills would honestly be turrets because we don't actually have a lot of cooldown reduction in the kit. You could also bring in something like the Owl. Or a sleeper hit with this build is the Corrosive Cloud. Just so you can have the two affixes you need to make your Boy Axe and Shrapnel Axe do incredible damage. For recommended mutations, you have to bring in the Point Blank. Just look the damage that this thing does. A single Boy Axe will absolutely wreck any monster that's in front of it. If you happen to get the ranged attack from Shrapnel, that's good too, but we don't really count on that. Usually I'll get Point Blank as my very first mutation because the damage from it is just so high. Next, we pick up the Ripper, which is the second piece of the build. What this does is that it removes the need for you to press the Boy Axe button again to get your axe back. You can see on the boss that you can throw the Boy Axe, slash to get it back automatically, throw it again for the massive point blank damage, and then your next slash will rip it out again. In essentially two slashes, you're doing so much damage, more than a shrapnel can do by itself, and more than the boy can do by itself. For the third mutation, I would recommend bringing in ammo, which actually gives you two boy axes you can throw. And what I usually do here is I'll throw the first boy axe, I'll throw the second one, and then I'll slash rip them both out then just rinse repeat. Sometimes I'll try to alternate, but in all honesty, that might use a little more effort than I need to. Take a look at how on the giant, I can throw out both shrapnel axes and then just slash normally and be perfectly fine. I do like to give you all some optional equipment you can use. Because we're kind of locked in on both the primary and secondary attack, what I'll offer is an optional acrobatic pack, which opens up the option for Frost Blast in the backpack, or Hokuto Bow in the event that you're using some kind of damage over time skill. 
I already mentioned that turrets, curls of cloud, the owl all do really well with this. But since our main hand damage is so high, you might even want to bring out something like cocoon or wave of denial for a little bit of added safety. Finally, we have our optional mutations. Once again, we're locked in to both point blank and ripper mutation. I did mention that you can try Acrobatty Pack, which opens up a lot of cool, unique versions of this build. Armadillo Pack also does a good job so that you can put something like a Thunder Shield or even Parry Shield in your backpack. And finally, Gastronomy can give you the bonus health regain that you need to get through a biome, but also a little bit of a damage bonus when you get to bosses. That usually comes from selling the food before you exit. Either way, whatever you choose, definitely give this build a try because when you take a look at this Hand of the King kill, you'll definitely definitely know that this is really good. This next build I almost feel like is bar none the easiest thing to play in the whole game. I can't remember the last time I actually lost using this thing and that is... Tactics Repeater Crossbow starts to get so easy that stuff just dies on the screen in one button without you even seeing it. Why we're choosing the Tactics version is because we have Barb Tips. And as you know, Barb Tips does damage whenever you put arrows into a monster. Repeater Crossbow happens to put arrows all over the screen with one button press. So it goes without saying that just hitting this one button has to be the best way to put Barb Tips on anything. If you happen to press the other button, which is the shoot button, you do a bunch of critical hits. That's because the volley of arrows from repeater has a root effect and your primary shot will crit anything that's rooted. Take a look at this conjunctivious fight, how we do one root, load in a ton of damage and almost get an instant phase change just off the first clip. If any monster doesn't just die to the volley of arrows, they're going to die from the primary attack. As you're going through the biome, just focus on shooting out that volley. You can almost fish down every hallway if you want. And you would be surprised how many monsters will simply die to just barb tips plus the volley. Let's first talk about the build itself because we want to be successful with everything we're taking. First off, as you know, Repeater is a dual-handed weapon. It takes both your primary and your secondary slot. But we do want to reroll these to find things that make sense. For your primary attack, you want bonus damage to some kind of a fix or bonus critical damage. As for the secondary, this is where you want the pierce. You shoot the volley and enemies like rats, enemies like scorpions, all of those get hit even though they're behind an inquisitor or a failed experiment. If you check out this clip, you can see that the volley hits all of the small creatures, but when you don't have the pierce, it will actually miss them. Anything else on the secondary is like a non-factor to me. Just go for the pierce and then leave it there if you can. The next recommended weapon actually corresponds with the first mutation here, which is Acrobatty Pack. Acrobatty Pack's actually really strong in tactics and you can kind of use it almost anywhere, anytime. But what's really nice about this one is that you can use Hokuto's bow along with the volley and it will do bonus damage over time because the volley itself is also damage over time. This is where you'll start to see monsters dying before they even show up on your screen because of the Hokuto and the volley doing 90% of the work. There are a lot of other things you can put in with Acrobatty Pack. We'll have those in the optional set in just a moment. For skills, you want things that are pretty long range, maybe turrets, maybe an owl, maybe wave of denial to push monsters away from you. I personally recommend some kind of turret, if not two of them. Believe it or not, a lot of the other skills besides the owl will actually rip arrows out of enemies. Things like magnetic grenade and wave of denial might be items to ignore because of the chance that it might rip your arrows out of the boss. My personal favorite turrets to use here is the heavy turret because that gives you bonus damage just by being near it. And the Tesla coil because, hey, it's Tesla coil. That's the best we got. Moving on to our mutations. As I said, we have Acrobatty Pack in here because that allows us to use the Hokuto in the backpack. We have Barb Tips, which is probably the very first mutation I'm taking in the biomes. That way my volley of arrows can start killing things without me having to press the square button. And from there, I usually take Tranquility. Tranquilo, as we like to call it, does more damage than support throughout the course of the game. It's just supposedly harder to use. When we're playing with a lockdown build like this, 
chances are we're away from monsters. So you'll probably use Tranquility a lot more than support's bonus damage will make up for it. If you look at the difference between me and Hand of the King, I am getting the bonus damage from the rain. So it's not like you need to be across the map to actually get any kind of bonus. So circling back to optional gear, if you're going Acrobatic Pack, you can actually go with something like the Boy Axe. That way, after your volley, you get to throw out a standard Boy Axe and it will actually give you crits on your primary. If you don't want to go Acrobatic Pack, you could go with Instinct the Master of Arms instead. Instinct though obviously works off your primary and lets you spam skills like Knife Dance or something like a Colorless Death Orb. This is probably when I would think about using Magnetic Grenade if I'm trying to get some kind of cooldown focused build. Just be aware that you might be ripping your arrows out and maybe doing a little less damage on your barb tips. Now that we have all of the build covered, it's important to talk about the bosses because this is where you need to have some kind of idea on how to approach these. Conjunctivius, Concierge, and Mamatic are simple enough. Land the triangle, hold square, boss is gone. You can typically do this with Timekeeper too, but rather than showing you all that, I want to show you the giant and the scarecrow. You may be told that fighting the giant is a bad idea with Repeater, but as long as you're playing the tactics version with barbed tips, Take a look at the damage that we're dealing to this thing. Am I doing critical hits? No, I'm not. But the constant 400 plus damage coming out from barbed tips will kill the giant of no matter what. The Scarecrow fight works almost the exact same way. I will often not even press square when I fight the Scarecrow at all. If you land enough volleys and you're using two turrets, the barb tips plus the turret while you just dodge around like crazy is enough to kill Scarecrow. It probably makes more sense to run for your life and let Scarecrow just burn out compared to actually trying to shoot it with your primary. Keep in mind that Scarecrow can be rooted, but it actually doesn't stay rooted for very long unless you use Wolf Trap, which might be a good option to take into this fight if it shows up. Then finally, Hand of the King. As you know, the hand can actually block bullets, but it doesn't spam the block in a way that makes it unfightable. Obviously, if you roll behind Hand of the King, you'll be able to fire off the volley. If he's attacking you, he won't do the block unless it's the shield charge. So you do have plenty of opportunity to actually put in arrows. And if you land the regular shot, then great. Just that's more damage coming out. But honestly, just loading in enough arrows does the trick. And keep in mind, I've been saying all of this without ever mentioning running out of ammo. The nice thing about repeater is that if you run out of ammo then who cares actually that's that's good because now you have barb tips running even if you check out this hand of the king video without me using a single turret the entire clip of the repeater crossbow does 25 percent of hand of the king's life the barb tips will do the remaining 25 and he'll go to the next phase if I had actually tossed down the turrets, then it would have probably changed phases already. Definitely a good build, probably better than the survival version, at least when we're talking about easy wins in Dead Cells. The next build coming up has been nerfed time and time again, but even after all of that, there's no way I can't have this in the top three. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, but the next one is... Ice shards plus electric whip. Now electric whip, honestly, you could probably use it with anything. Ice shards, honestly, you could probably use it with anything. We're not using ice shards solo because it's been nerfed to the ground. We're not using electric whip solo because it's so easy to use a throwing item in front of it, even without the dual binding. And trust me, I'm not gonna mention dual binding here, but the ice shards stop everything that's in front of you and let you spam the electric whip which is what you want to do anyway it may not be the strongest burst attack in the game but when monsters can't do anything the ease of use with this combined with the full build you're gonna see that this is a real top three so as i said you're going through the biome you're slowing everything that comes up to you and then you hit it with the electric whip one time you can really see this in Moras and Toxic Sewers. One Ice Shard and Electric Whip will probably clear multiple monsters at the same time. Those two are locked in for my recommendations, but we're actually using Acrobatic Pack again with this, recommended with the Alchemic Carbine. Why we do this? 
instead of Hokuto's bow is because the electric whip needs bonus damage. You might see me roll for double damage taken and stuff like that. But honestly, you want to get bonus to poison or bonus to fire. And then you can put something like the alchemic carbine or even just a Molotov in your backpack. Both the ice shards and the electric whip are ranged weapons. You can get a carbine that has oil on hit, and then you'll start to crit on your ice shards. But in the end, you just end up with so many different damage sources, poison, plus electricity on top of a slow. No way a monster doesn't die to this. For skills, I like to use something that is a little more mobile. I'm personally a big fan of Wave of Denial here because it has such a short cooldown. You don't really need cooldown reduction along with it. Or the Sickle, because again, you can't reduce the cooldown on this thing while it's out. So it ends up being a pretty nice source of damage that you don't have to worry about. Now, as far as mutations go, the only one that I want to lock in for the recommendation is acrobatic pack the other two that i would highly recommend starts with no mercy even though the build is strong enough as is you'll find that getting a random kill with no mercy on say a bat or scorpion or even a high damage monster like a slasher could prevent unwanted hits even if you like to speed through the maps no mercy is really cool because if you tag a monster one time and it gets a dot on it Chances are it's just gonna die to the no mercy. It's technically one less button you have to press because you only had to attack the monster one time. The third recommended mutation is actually gonna be Point Blank. Point Blank works with Electric Whip because it's a ranged item. It also works with the Ice Shards. Since monsters are slowed anyway, it's kind of okay to stand on top of them. Chances are they won't be able to attack you back, but the Point Blank is really gonna help you for bosses. For the optional weapons, as I said, you could use Hokuto's bow in the backpack. You could also swap that out for Armadillo pack for a shield. Just be careful that you don't lower your damage too much. If you happen to keep the oil in the kit you can actually drop the no mercy and put in instincto instead and run something like last ring aura and knife dance which work really good with the actual cooldown production the crits are coming from your ice shard so every time you throw an ice shard you should get one second off of your last ring aura now as far as bosses are concerned there isn't a single boss that can defend itself against this of course, not everything can be slowed, but that's not really what we're worried about. What makes this work is that we have poison in the backpack, we have a skill running, and we have the electric whip that hits the monster while we're able to dodge right after. Unlike other tactics builds that have slow windups on certain weapons, we can almost always run away when we use this build. Because it also has dot in it, then the monster is still taking damage, almost like a barb tips build. And we get auto targeting whenever we jump in the air or anything like that. This build also gives you a really good Mama Tick fight. As you can see in this clip, Mama Tick takes a ton of damage because it's in the water. It also gets stunned whenever it takes damage from the electrified water. Just make sure you're dodging properly because sometimes the slow from the ice shards might screw you up. But technically, you don't really have to throw out the ice shards if you don't want to in this fight. Timekeeper is pretty nice because since she runs around the map and teleports really quickly, the ice shards give you a chance to keep up. And I like to jump a lot in the timekeeper fight, so that gives me the chance to get the auto target off the electric whip. The scarecrow, however, runs to you, so you're usually running away. There's the bounce pads and all that cool stuff. Usually that I'll use so I can get into the air, attack scarecrow with the auto targeting, and keep applying the dot so that I eventually die to no mercy. And then finally, Hand of the King. This might be a little more mechanical of a fight than all the other builds, simply because he can't be slowed. This is pretty much just a DPS race. You're trying to do as much as possible just to get down to the 7% or whatever that No Mercy activates with. Once again, jumping is your best friend. You can jump over the three hit slash. You can jump over his slam attacks and just flotate with the actual electric whip. Not a lot of weapons can do that and also still hit the boss. But if all else fails, take Wings of the Crow into the fight. Hand of the King absolutely gets demolished by both Wings of the Crow along with electric whip. And that alone will probably get you a free win. All right, and there you have it. My favorite tactics builds, easiest wins in the game in my opinion. Just like the brutality video, I did have some runners up that I want to include. A couple of bonus builds for everyone. The first being, once again, the snake fangs. 
but this time we're using snake fangs with ice shards and acrobatic pack. You put alchemic carbine in the backpack and that gives you a very, very easy poison source where a monster might have five stacks before you even get the slash off. Next, we have Sonic Carbine. I didn't really put this one in because I do think that Repeater is a little bit easier. But if you're a 5BC winner and you have access to this, take Sonic Carbine with Ammo Mutation and Barb Tips. You're able to load in more arrows than you can with Repeater Crossbow. And you get to keep your secondary slot open to something like a shield or wherever else you really want to use there. And then the final build I'm going to throw in this one is sometimes a little dangerous to use, but this is what I would call the oily owl. You basically want a great owl of war that you roll for applies oil to the enemy. We're using that over oil grenade because we want the other slot to be a high damage skill like magnetic grenade. And we're using the weapons that do crits and oil. So for example, the pyrotechnics or the fire blast. I'm a big fan of fire blast myself. And what you get out of this is that every attack should be a critical hit. You're able to spam your magnetic grenade, which also has a little bit of crowd control because it draws enemies into it. And when you finally reach hand of the king or even the spoiler boss, you have that magnetic grenade that does really well in those fights. So yeah, those are the builds. If you made it this far, leave a like on the video, leave a comment as well. Let me know which one of these is your favorite, which one you never thought to use before, or if I left out one of your favorite builds, post that one and I'll let you know how I feel about it. Also subscribe to the channel. We play a lot of Dead Cells. We post a lot of guides as well as vids for other games. And don't forget to catch up on the other top three builds shown here. Otherwise, you all have a good one and I'll catch you on the next video.